Hey there, Hillary here for Waterlogged on behalf of SaltwaterAquarium.com. You can see this bright blue structure behind me. It might give you an idea as to where I'm at. But if you're not familiar, this is Aquarium of the Pacific. Now I did some of my first behind the scenes filming at a public aquarium here at this location. It's been a couple of years since I visited and so I'm looking forward to going back and checking things out and seeing all that they have that's brand new. All right, let's go get started. One of the biggest changes I noticed during this visit was the Our Living Coastline exhibit. Now this is an interactive hands-on tide pool exhibit that opened in early 2025. It gives the guests a close-up look at what it would be like to visit some of the local and regional Southern California tide pools. Now something I really was impressed with, I think they did an excellent job on this, is how realistic it is. You see it's really calm right now, but you also get to experience what it's like when a wave crashes over the tide pool that you are looking in and disrupts the surface of the water. So I think the plumbing and how they made this system is really, really incredible. Now this tide pool system has dozens of different species in there. There's a lot of really colorful invertebrates, like you can see here, these two urchins, and they have a bunch of different species of algae. But that's not what you're limited to. They also have a ray in here, so you have some of the larger charismatic megafauna as well in this tank. Now, something else that I encourage you if you're visiting here, not just in this system, but in all of the systems at Aquarium of the Pacific, they have a big focus on sea star. They have up to 20 different species, so I challenge you to see if you can't find them all. Tide pools aren't the only regional habitat for biodiversity. Seagrass is a nursery for juvenile fish. It's a natural protection against coastal erosion, and it's a reservoir for carbon. But unfortunately, 90% of seagrass beds that were once common in coastal areas have been destroyed or degraded by development, agricultural runoff, and vessel traffic. But good news! Recovery is actually possible thanks to local restoration groups. But don't worry. Coastal habitats aren't all that I want to share with you while I'm here at Aquarium of the Pacific. I gotta say, I'm a huge fan of invertebrates, both in my tanks and when I visit public aquariums. I love to see all of the different species that they have in their collection, and Aquarium of the Pacific never disappoints. How many species of sea stars do you see in this one? Alright, while I love invertebrates, my primary thing that I am on the hunt for in every single aquarium that I visit is always going to be a boxfish or some sort of pufferfish. Now, I was delighted to see all of these fusiliers hanging out in this tank together, but I was even more enthusiastic when I saw this cute little long-horned cowfish. I love how charismatic that these guys are. It doesn't matter where they're at in the tank, if they see you looking for them, they will almost always come up to the glass to check you out and say hello. And this guy was no exception. Another surprise that I got to see while I was at Aquarium of the Pacific was this day octopus. Now, its name really shouldn't have surprised me that it was out and about, but I was delighted nonetheless. It doesn't matter, anytime I go to a aquarium, it's rare for me to actually get to see an octopus, much less one come up to the glass like this guy did. How beautiful are those color patterns? Now here's another example of an ecosystem. This is an artificial reef. If you've been to California just off the coast, especially in Southern California, you know that there's a lot of amazing cold water artificial reefs that you can dive on. Hard structures like oral rig platforms provide safe places for smaller animals and are often teeming with biodiversity. Time to visit one of the redone sections of the Pacific Vision Wing, and this is the baby's exhibit. 
I love getting to see these teeny tiny moon jellies on display, and they're not the only jellies. We're also getting to see the little Japanese sea nettle babies that are here on display for us as well. But I think by far my favorite was the tiny peppermint shrimp. Look how many there are, they are so cute. I think Aquarium of the Pacific did an amazing job putting these on display. They are so well lit, you get to see so much definition in these little critters. And check out these baby pipefish. Now if you come to see this exhibit, I think the babies they have on display change throughout the year, so let me know what you see. Okay, I want to show you one last ecosystem, mangrove forests. Did you know that there's over 30 species of mangrove trees that thrive in warm coastal waters around the world? They're really impressive organisms. They can absorb the impacts of tides and tropical storms, and they store more carbon than any forest on land. And on top of that, they're actually a shelter for baby fish that hang out in their roots while they're growing up. Now, up until recently, mangrove forests were declining due to expansion of palm oil plantation and coastal developments. But fortunately, nations around the world are conserving and restoring mangrove ecosystems thanks to the benefits they provide. Okay, well it's time for me to go, but I couldn't resist saying goodbye to Sam. Did you see the writing in his patterns on the side? Let me know in the comments below. I gotta say, that was such a fun trip, getting to see all the things that have changed here at Aquarium of the Pacific. If you are in the area, I highly recommend coming to check it out. It is one of my favorite aquariums to visit, and I'm never disappointed. Even though I've been so many times, there's always something new to see. All right, this has been Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.